Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Whenever we have a problem, an issue, and we try to solve it, in order to figure out how to solve it, we have to figure out how it started and uh, what you know triggered what you know uh, the issue, what uh, caused the consequence. And by doing that, you have to go back in time and take the chronological events that are uh, you know relevant to the issue that might have affected the issue. And then you've realized how it originated and what other factors influenced the, the issue that now you try to solve. Now we have a little problem with Japan. Japan, uh, most, uh, I mean, to be more precise, is the Sea of Japan. Now the Sea of Japan obviously is by Japan, but uh, it's, how should I put it, it's on the western side of Japan. And on the eastern side of the Sea of Japan, we have some countries, which is South Korea, North Korea, I think a little, little bit of China, if I'm not uh, mistaken, and then you got um, Vladivostok, Russia, okay, and you got Sakhalin, and you got uh, uh, the Kuril Islands, or the Northern Territory, as the, uh, Japan likes to call them. So it's an in, enclosed kind of sea, all right? And uh, I mean, enclosed is not like enclosed, like landlocked. No, no, no. But uh, it looks like it's a closed sea anyway. So the problem is this. We have, or Japan has, uh, strategic bombers flying in the Sea of Japan. But they are Russian and Chinese strategic bombers. I don't think Japan likes that. So that's the problem, that's the issue. Now, how can we solve the issue? We have to see what caused the issue for those guys to patrol all of a sudden with nuclear weapons or possible, you know, it's a nuclear, you know, bombers and so on. So let's read the article first and then we're gonna discuss what do you think caused the Russians and the Chinese to have joint patrolling missions with nuclear bombers in that area. I mean, maybe you might already know the answer. The Jerusalem Post reports on December 14th, 2022, that Russian strategic bombers patrol over Sea of Japan, Defense Ministry. Now it's just the, the Russians, but they patrolled with the Chinese before. So Russia's Defense Ministry said on Wednesday that Two Russian 295 strategic bombers carried out a seven hour patrol flight over the Sea of Japan. The bombers, capable of carrying nuclear bombs and nuclear armed cruise missiles, were accompanied by Russian Suhoi class fighter jets, the ministry said. That's very serious. Even while bogged down thousands of miles away in its war in Ukraine, Russia has continued to conduct regular strategic bomber flights as a show of strength to its neighbors in the Far East. Last month, it carried out joint patrols with China over the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea. The Defense Ministry said the latest mission, accom uh, latest mission com complied with international airspace rules and was part of regular flights over what it called the neutral, neutral waters of Arctic, North Atlantic, Black and Baltic Seas and the Pacific Ocean. Well, I think this is a problem for Japan. I don't think Japan likes that and Japan is in high alert and not only, South Korea as well. Well, what caused these Russians to uh, do this kind of routine uh, flights? which I don't know if that's something that, uh, I mean, I, I know it's not something that they conducted, I don't know, seven years ago. Remember, they just put a strategic bombers in, uh, in action again, uh, just, uh, I can remember, maybe seven, six, seven years ago or something, or maybe like that, something like that, when they got angry with the Americans flying their shit around uh, Russia and said, yeah, okay, now we have, uh, we, we, we're gonna restart patrolling. So how can we have this, uh, you know, not patrolling? Because that's a obvious, uh, you might take it as a provocation, isn't it? 
And what do you think triggered this, triggered these little missions? I think, going back, I think is Japan's response to Russia's issues across the other side of the planet in Ukraine, where Japan inserted itself into the Ukrainian uh, scuffle with the United States on Ukraine. Now you can say, well, Emil, you know what you're doing? Right now you're blaming Japan for something like this. Well, if you want, I don't blame anybody for anything because these guys did not break any international law. Even if they did, nobody would care because they're too big. Like America breaks it, <clears throat> they don't care how they break it. Well, they're in Syria, for instance. What are they doing in Syria? Make sure that they fight, they fight ISIS. I remember that ISIS uh, was uh, <clears throat> by Trump, wasn't it? <laughs> With heavy lifting done by Russia, wasn't it? Uh, another war that we won, mission accomplished, and someone else uh, put their shoulder. And, and we just, eh, okay, we, we, we together won. Anyway, so, I, uh, uh, it's, it's a consequence, I think, of uh, Japan imposing sanctions on Russia and Russia bring it back. Japan again, Russia back. And then this guy said, okay, well, we'll make you uncomfortable. What is Japan doing now? Japan is going to buy, for the first time since the end of the Second World War, offensive missiles that could reach 1,000 miles. All right? So this is what they do. All this BS. Why? Because they're still under the occupation of who? Japan will increase its military spending. I can't remember. Uh, it will double it or something. Again, there, why? Who do they feel threatened by? China? Russia? Everybody? It's just an escalation. It's just an escalation. And that's where, that's, I think, that happens when you uh, just insert yourself in other people's business. Because I think Ukraine was not Japan's business. But, hey, you have the right to do that. What can I say? Then the consequences as, as they are. I know they were upset with the Chinese and the uh, Russians uh, doing the joint flights as well. I read other articles again. They... Uh, how they call, uh, call that? They protested. They protested the, Ru uh, the Russians and the Chinese for these strategic um, uh, you know, flights. Nothing illegal. I know you don't like it. And that's exactly why they continue to do it. Is it a safer place now over there? I don't think that those flights are because, uh, so, again, look at, um, which is, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, <laughs> how do you call it, uh, Taiwan. Is that a uh, escalation over there? Yes, it is. Who escalated it? An idiot, a, a, a dead person, another one, a mummy, you know, a corpse who landed in Taiwan. Why? Create problems. She was allowed by the US government because US government had to agree that Nancy, fancy Nancy, the corpse, uh, was allowed to go to Taiwan. She couldn't have flown over there. So again, who escalated what? You can say, well, that's her right. But it's not really like that. I mean, if you have a good neighbor over there, right, and you are friends with the neighbor, or you know, keep a you know a civil uh, relationship with that person, and you know that person does not like to, I know, doesn't like guns. If you respect that person, you're not going to show up with a gun around, even if you have the right, even if you're in the street. Even if you're not on that, the neighbor's property, you're not going to go shooting uh, in the backyard uh, you know, your shotgun or your 45, boom, 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 boom over there. I mean, you can, you can do all this, but don't you think you're going to upset a little bit the neighbor? He's not going to like you and maybe the neighbor is going to do something you don't like. And then this is going to, you know, escalate to a point where you have to figure things out because that's going to be uh, irritating for both of you. Why? Because the corpse went to Taiwan. Because Japan imposed sanctions on those guys without being part of anything. Of anything. Let's say Papua New Guinea would have imposed sanctions on Russia because of the war in uh, whatever. What the fuck? 
And oh, Papua New Guinea is? Anyway, they can, but then if they have the Chinese or the whatever flying around the uh, island, I don't think the Papua New Guinea will uh, like it, but I don't want to be uh, insulting any people from Papua New Guinea. But anyway, no, mind your own business. And uh, as you know, you can have alliances, you can do whatever you want, but then there are consequences. Think more than one step ahead. Think more than that. And these guys are, I know Japan is a, is not a, a sovereign country. It's not a free country. It's not an independent country. I'm talking about the government. We know that. I mean, since 1945, bye-bye, your bows were snipped as well as Germany's in the same time, clip, clip, and that's it. And somehow you have the same troops on the territory. You know, Germany doesn't have, I don't know, British troops on your territory. Does it? I don't remember having it. Why only U.S.'s? <laughs> because the British did not have the ability, really. They had at one point, when they divided it, you know, in sectors of who got what and who's got where, and then, you know, little by little, they, some went home, some never went home. Who are those? The same ones. Zimbabwe. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.